Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Dad Edge Podcast. I'm Larry Hagner, your host and founder of this show. Welcome to our fourth Fierce Friday. I know we're trying to confuse you guys with taking away Thursday Throwdown, but we, we really kind of haven't. Uh, what we were doing here now is we are spreading these shows out. Used to have a show on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Now it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. The reason we're doing that is just give you guys a little bit of breathing room, a little bit of space in between each show. But today I've got a really exciting and humorous guest for you guys today. A man that I've been seeing on social media now for quite some time, and he sparked my interest in the fact that like, man, this guy just brings so much humor back to being a father, back to being a husband, and literally entertaining, but so inspirational and so informative all at the same time. This guy puts together a weekly dad show every single Wednesday and to date has done over 75 videos. He's got a massive following on LinkedIn. But certain things that emerge for just doing what he calls basic dad stuff, basic dad stuff, humor, how to, how to be more united with your wife, how to teach your kids how to be a sheepdog, uh, how to be affectionate with your kids, how to say no, not only to your kids, but the people around you, changing diapers, tickle fights, and everything from even picking out the Cheerios, and in my case, the hundreds of millions of goldfish that seem to find their way into the seats. And th these things as, as fathers, right? I mean, they drive us absolutely crazy from time to time. But it's cool to have a guy like Matt Wells, who his platform is basic dad stuff. He gets to teach us something every single Wednesday, but also brings the humor that really involves what being a dad is all about. And when you're raising four kids like I am, like he is, and for those of you guys who have more than one kid, you know how crazy it can get. I'm really excited to have him on because what he's going to talk about today is just some of the learnings of what he's learned just by doing some of these reflective videos and just basically sharing them with the world, but also having a full-time job, being married for the past 13 years, having four kids. By the way, two of them are twins. How about that? But Matt, dude, it's an honor to have you here, man. What is going on, Larry, man? The honor is all mine, brother. I am really, truly just kind of, uh, it's surreal to be talking to you, brother, for real. Oh man, this is cool stuff. I've been watching your videos for quite some time and I know you're in our dad edge group on Facebook, our big group. We got that. And, mm -hmm. I, and I've always come across these videos. I'm like, oh my God, this guy's hilarious. And you're right. You know, before we actually hit record today, we started talking about how crazy dad life can be and like how, I mean, dad life will bring you to your knees with being with humility. Right. And sometimes we just need a pick me up of like, man, does anybody else experience what I'm experiencing? And not only that, but can I somehow, some way find some humor in it? I don't know. But you have seemed to find that find you have found that in, in these videos, which I love, man. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate that. It, it's been something that just kind of organically happened and it just kept going and going. And then my kids latched on to to doing it. They walk around saying basic dad stuff at times. And uh, don't, my sister, my daughter, I have one nine-year-old daughter who will say basic sister stuff. You know, and they just kind of latch on to it and do their own brand of it. I love it, man. We're going to get into that. And we're going to get into some of the resources that you have for some of us dads who are out there who need, we, we might need a lesson or two, but we also need some humor. We need <laughs> the right guy to deliver that type of message to us, which, man, you are. If any of you guys have seen Matt and the basic dad stuff, uh, you know what I'm talking about already. But let's let's just start here. Let's start with you have four kids, right? Yes, sir. Four and kids. I got a nine year old, a four year old, nine year old daughter, four year old son, and then almost two year old twin boys. Dude, that is not for. Are you guys done, or you have more? <laughs> oh, we are done, man. We we uh, we uh, cut the cord and we are finished and done. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> there's no more it's, it's beautiful like i always say it's you have four kids too you know more better than anybody else you know it's chaos but i call it it's beautiful chaos man every day is just beautiful chaos do you find yourself saying things out loud that you never thought you'd say to any other human being on the planet <laughs> do, do, do any of us not find ourselves repeating <laughs> things that we say we never ever say yeah. and now we say them on the daily over and over yeah. and over again it's like oh my gosh am i saying this absolutely Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, what's one of the funniest things that you've actually had to say or do out loud as a father? And you're just like, I never I never thought this would be it, man. Like, I never thought I'd be doing what I'm doing right now. Like, wow. Oh, man. How many things have I said that you go on? Am I really saying this? Like, uh, how about don't shoot that bow and arrow at your brother's head, you know, <laughs> or uh, or stop throwing a football at the back of my head while I'm driving. You know, right. you, you can't do that. So, uh, or but things that every parent has said, you know, stop kicking my seat. Uh, 
who turned the air condition down or, you know, who, who are, are we going to leave every light in this house on these things that our parents said, you've heard, you know, you know comedians talk about them and they're just real. That's why they say it. Cause it's all so real. And we all wind up saying it. We say, we're not going to, but we do. We do. I've actually had to say this, man. And I'm not even kidding. I've joked about this on the show before. Please don't eat your cheese and crackers while you're taking a dump. I've actually had to say that to one of my kids and I'm not going to out who it was because he might be listening to the show down the road, but I just couldn't even believe like after I even said that and he's holding cheese and crackers on plate as he's, as he's exiting the bathroom. And I'm like, do I, am I really about ready to have this conversation? It's crazy, man. <laughs> and what's, what's funny is that it doesn't surprise me at all. I, having, having a boy, I literally three or four days ago had to tell him, he's in the potty training stage, I had to tell him, don't wipe your hiney until I get the toilet paper because the toilet paper was out. I had to tell him, listen, don't wipe until right. we have the toilet paper in there because, you know, he'll go, uh, you know, he'll go freehand in it. So, Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, man, we're we're doing that with my, with one of my kids right now. We, uh, he's potty trained, but we're, we're teaching him, you know, how to, how to wipe properly right now. And just some of the crap that he says, he's like, how do I get this off my balls? Like just stuff like that. Yep. <laughs> yep. Like, That's my wife has literally said to me, she, she says, I don't like the word balls. And I'm like, well, yeah. kids will come in and say, Hey, my balls or something. And she's like, I don't, I don't like him saying balls. Like, darling, what, what do you want him to say? I mean, he says testicles and he's going to be asking for trouble down the road, you know, talking yeah. about testicles at school. It's his balls or, or his nuts, you know, and he's a little boy. He's going to talk like a little boy. I used to have this friend of mine growing up. He used to call him bags. And I'm like, dude, I don't know, man. Ba balls just sound like aesthetically better than bags <laughs> because when I hear bags, I think of like, I just, it's, it's not a good, it's not a pretty picture, right? So, <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. You got to do, you got to, you got to put the names on whatever feels right. That is for sure. So, Absolutely. so four kids married for 13 years. Let's, so let's talk about your wife for a second. Let's talk about marriage. Mm -hmm. You guys are raising four kids. Two of them are twins. You're working a full-time job. Uh, you also do basic dad stuff on, you know, on the side. But talk to me about what is what has been some of the most what has been one of the best lessons you've learned about marriage? Oh gosh, the best lesson. I'm still learning, man. I mean, marriage, as we all know, is a constant work in progress. No matter how long you've been married, you're continually learning and doing better and trying to do better at it. Uh, I would say the best lessons have just the, probably the most important thing as a parent, and even we still struggle with this, is just like you said earlier, being united, having, being united and being united front and being, uh, you know, locked arm on issues because our children know and learn very early on how to manipulate the whole good cop, bad cop dynamic, you know, so they will use that to their advantage. Mom says no, or dad says no, and then dad walks away and they ask mom. And that turns into number one, child knowing how to, you know, manipulate the situation, get what they want. Number two, it turns the parents against one another. Um, so I, I think really and truly just the, the, the unity between the mom and the dad is probably the most important thing I've learned as a father. I mean, you know, just in marriage, you know, between her and I and, you know, our relationship and the romantic side of staying connected and loving each other, that's different. But as a father, the unity is the most important part of it, sure. I agree with that. Yeah, my wife and I have this, we have an agreement. We've had an agreement like this, even before kids is that we will never not have each other's back, even if we disagree with the other person's decision in front of the kids. Mm -hmm. So if my wife lays down the law and, and if in the back of my mind, I'm like, wow, that was a bit extreme or like what I will never be like, you know, Hey, should we, I think we should let him off the hook. Like, you know, I, I don't really know if I agree with that. And she does the same for me. There's been several situations where she's like, wow, like I, I didn't think that that would be such a big deal. You, you kind of made it a big deal. I don't know if I really agree with it, but we never do that in front of the kids. Right. And if one person you know, throws down a disciplinary action or they, they say something, they're like, and then they'll look at the other parent, you know, look at one of us and be like, you know, Hey, are we going to do that? And I'm like, well, she said it, he said it. Yeah. That's what we're doing. That's right. You know, I'm always going to have mom's back. She's always going to have mine, you know? Yeah. And then we, we also, we, we created that line even early on with the kids. We're like, listen, if mom says no, it's no. If I say no, it's no. Don't ever try to go back and be like, well, dad said this, what do you say? It's just, it's not going to work out in your favor. I can tell you yeah, that yeah. much. And even if it does work out in your favor, it's going to be temporary because we're going to come back. We're going to talk about it. And then whatever the first decision was, we're going to retro back to that first decision. So perfect, man. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So you talked about also being united uh, as parents, but also united as a couple. Mm -hmm. So how do you guys keep your spark alive with marriage? You know, it, it, I would say in the last year, 
interestingly enough, when it was a pandemic and things were locked down, I'm in Florida. So I've never been so happy to live in Florida in my life because it's right. life is fairly normal here for us. I mean, it's been, it's been a pretty open gates for a long time now, but the dating thing is just so important. Uh, and, and the conversations and, you know, we've made it a habit in the last year or so we've gotten a lot better at making sure we do go on dates. We went on a, on a weekend getaway last year, which was just so, so invigorating and refreshing for us. It was, it was an actual vacation, not a trip. You know, <laughs> we actually got away and it was just there is a difference. Us. There is a difference. I heard you talking the other day to, uh, on the protecting young mind, protecting young eyes about that. But, yeah. uh, it was vacation, just a two day trip, you know, two or two nights and, and three quick days. But even that was just uh, completely and totally revitalizing for us. But the date nights are just such an important thing. And being able to, you talk about it, I took them from you, you know, in the, in the 21 day challenge here, of just scheduling those date nights out, having them on your calendar, actually making a, a point to do them. Because no matter how short it is, just getting that time away, it's whether if just if it's for the communication between the two of you, if it's for, you know, whatever happens romantically afterwards, if it's just for the break of the crying and the fussing and whatever else, it, it makes such a big difference if you don't have that time apart and a time away from with each other. It is, it is incredibly needed and usually overlooked in a lot of relationships. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that is one thing like my kids are, especially my older ones, man, they're, they're at this point in their life right now where they, they're very attuned and they know that we mom and dad go out on a date and so like, why can't we go? And my answer to them is because it's really important for you that mom and I continue to like each other. Yeah. Like I know maybe it doesn't feel like it, maybe a FOMO that you're missing out on, but like, trust me when I say it's really important that mom and I have our time. And mm -hmm. I always tell them too, I'm like, dude, listen, when you're married and you have kids, like we'll be there to watch your kids. Okay. Yeah. Like we will be some built-in babysitters because it's so important for you and your wife not to overlook that stuff. Cause a lot of people do. And then like five, 10 years pass and they're like, oh my God, who am I even sleeping next to? Right. Yeah. So you got to do those things, man. I hear you. Couldn't agree more, especially with, you know, having, having three boys, you got four boys that, or even the daughters, you know, growing up and seeing the dad takes mom out on a date or the mom goes out with dad. They still enjoy yeah. each other. That's so important for them, for their relationships down the road. Also. I'm glad you said that because a lot of us think that like, I've got to be 150% in on these kids, which we do to a certain extent, right? But we also, what happens is we sacrifice our marriage on the sword of nobility, thinking that that's the right thing to do. And unfortunately, what happens is, is the kids never really get to see what a fully functional, intimate, close friendship, partnership, lovers, the whole nine yards relationship, like what that really looks like. Unfortunately, yeah. a lot of our kids, what they see is, is a relationship just simply existing. Yeah, right. They absolutely. don't necessarily see it thriving. They don't see us pursuing and courting and and dating and and fun and excitement and all these things, right? So it's really important for them to see. I'm I'm glad you mentioned that, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, let's talk about basic dad stuff. Uh, you are a character <laughs> on these videos, man. They're so engaging. Like, they, there's not many people in the world that can pull off that personality type to where you, you just sort of act a fool, but you act a fool in such an engaging way that's like, oh my gosh, man, I can't wait to watch the next video. But um, yeah, talk to me about how Basic Dad Stuff even came to be. So the origin story of Basic Dad Stuff is there's a guy named Pat, Patrick McNamara or Pat Mac as people know him on his social media presence. He's an, he was a, he's an army special ops guy and now he's got a lot of different things going on in his world. He, you know, he does... Um, combat strength training for strength training and stuff but he started doing something called basic dude stuff and i came across it on linkedin on his first week of doing it just i don't know why it popped into my feed you know you can call it uh, fate call it for you know fortuitous whatever but i happen to see this thing on there it's like a minute long video and he's just basically doing stuff that guys do you know uh, using a hatchet or cleaning your truck just dude stuff and he says basic dude stuff and I'm watching, I'm going, this is, this is perfect. This is, this is so my personality right here. I mean, I'm not an ex army special ops guy, but the way he talks, the, you know, his, his inflections, just the way he looks at the camera, that reminds me of myself. And I thought to myself, you know, that'd be really fun to do a spoof on as a dad and uh, call it basic dad stuff. So I reached out to him over LinkedIn and I asked him, Hey man, would you mind if I did a quick spoof on you on this? I mean, I want to do it without giving you a thumbs up on it. Um, I'd make, I'd give you credit for it and, you know, say I'm inspired by Pat Mack and he shot me back a message, just a thumbs up emoji, you know, go for it. So I said, all right, I'm gonna do it. So I did, I did like a two minute basic dad stuff video. The very first one was 
was, you know, it was like me shaking the car seat out. It was, uh, you know, hanging the kids upside down. It was me walking into the bathroom where my wife was getting ready and smacking her in the butt and saying, dang, you look good. You know, just stuff like that. And I, I put it on LinkedIn and I was already doing videos on LinkedIn for a little bit there. I, most of them are all humor, humor related videos. I'm in, I'm in sales. So they were all like sales themed, humorous videos, like, uh, you know, road warriors, things that people that are on the road all the time do in their cars, stuff like that. Um, and I dropped the basic dad stuff video and it did, you can call it LinkedIn viral, you know, viral on LinkedIn is very different than viral on Instagram or TikTok or whatever other platforms, but I got several hundred likes and reactions, which was big. And, and a lot of comments of people that reached out and said, this is great. You should do more of this. So I said, all right, I'll do another one. And I kept doing it. And it very quickly became like a weekly video journal of me just doing stuff with my kids. And it's just everyday things, you know? It's not like I have to think about it or plan it out or script it. It's just, hey, stuff that you're already doing as a father and we do a million different things and just holding the phone up for, for seven, eight seconds and recording it and just saying, hey, basic dad stuff and, um, and dropping it. And people see the videos and I think what's so great about it and why people love it and what, is it's just so relatable. They see it and they see themselves in the video. They see, you know, what they were doing last week or yesterday. And are people who are grandparents now who watch them, they respond and send me a message saying, man, this takes me back so many years when my kids were little. I love this. Thanks for, you know, helping me vi vicariously relive that time of life, you know. And uh, it, it's just been something that revolved into what quite shot to me is surprising how many people reach out with messages saying that it inspired them or it encouraged them, or they're going through a tough time with, you know, their children or losing a spouse or other lots of other things where that minute and a half long video just picked them up and boosted them out of a rut. Yeah, man. No, I totally get it. And uh, you said something there that I want to make sure that the audience heard. And, and this is sort of a new vision process for me as well. Um, do you know who Wes Watson is? fitness guy? I do not. Okay. So Wes Watson came on the show. He spent 10 years in the penitentiary uh, and he's got a big ferocious personality and um, he's, he's in the fitness industry now. And he came on the podcast. It's actually one of our most top downloaded shows. Uh, but anyway, it's called his brand is Watson fit. And he's, oh, I do remember this. I remember yeah. this episode. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like a really fit guy. Right. And he's very intense. Uh, but one of the things that he shared was you know, how to view your life and basically how to get out of your head. And I think as, as parents and fathers, like we're in our head so much and rightfully so there's a lot going on, right? We're balancing a ton of things. I truly understand why grandparents always say being a grandparent is the best thing ever because your sole responsibility as a grandparent is just to enjoy it. Yeah. Cause you're, you're no longer really in the, in the main driver's seat. You're, you're now kind of in the back seat watching things unfold and your job is to not necessarily drive the car and to control the air conditioner and to get this you know, to, to do all these different things you're supposed to do as, as a parent your job is to sit in the back seat and just enjoy the ride right absolutely so you know he talked about this how he views himself in a third person so like he'll watch instead of like him watching him life his life unfold in front of his eyes with his kid and his wife and his business and everything else he'll watch himself do it. So kind of almost, almost like engaging what we would call the witness. So it's like watching your own movie sort of unfold. Right. And it's a way to get out of your own head of, of right in the now and the here in the first person. I know it sounds kind of woo woo, but trust me, it, it's fascinating. I think your videos serve as a good reminder and a good purpose of what that's like, because I think when men see your videos, they're like, I've done that. Mm -hmm. I know what that's like, and I'm watching it. Right. The other cool thing too, is that when you are around your kids, like last night, I was, I, I have probably 10 drawings that I sat with my seven year old and we just drew. And he guided me through what we're going to draw. I was like, okay, well, what are we going to draw next? He's like, we're going to draw a hot dog. I'm like, okay, drawing a hot dog. We're going to draw next. We're going to draw a bug. Okay, we're going to draw next. We're going to draw a cat. And we're drawing. And instead of me focusing so much on like, what am I drawing right now? I thought about like, what am I seeing here? Like, as I okay. look over at him and like, how do I view him right now? As if I were to fast forward my life 30 years from now, and if I'm looking at this moment right now of us here, what am I seeing instead of just focusing on the ears and the whiskers of this cat? And it brought me to a place where I, I just simply got to enjoy, right? Just, yeah. to, just to watch. And it was so cool. And I, I honestly think your videos serve as that. It brings humor 
back to moments that would otherwise, in some cases, kind of annoy us to death because, right, we're in it, like the Cheerios yeah. and all that other stuff. But I, I love what you're doing, man. And I don't know if anybody's ever said it to you in that way, but I think that's, I think that that's a big part of what you do is allow people to view what they've gone through and maybe a more humorous filter that's more lighthearted. Absolutely. I, I love the way you put that, man, because it is like like an outside of body experience. You know, you, you take away, you float up and you're looking back at it. And then, like you said, you don't think about these things. So many people don't think about or realize what they did or how they did it until they're looking back on it years later. Uh, and, and so you're like you said, you're instead of looking at the hot dog you're drawing, you know, move back and see you sitting there drawing a hot dog with your son, who's also drawing a hot dog. And you're together in that moment, instead of you focusing on drawing this, you know, this buns in the wiener and whatever else you're drawing on there. So, uh, <laughs> you see that the eight year old just came out me. <laughs> well, it has to. Uh, I, I want to talk about this one, the one video that, that you mentioned, which is, um, teaching your kids to be a sheepdog. Mm-hmm. I've had this discussion with my kids a lot, especially, you know, in this day and age where um, kids are being bullied and yeah. if kids have a device, right. It, the, the one cool, I don't know how old you are, but I'm 45. And one thing that I realized as when I was growing up is that I was bullied, but the bullying stopped when I came home. Yeah. And, but now with our kids and devices and iPads and emails and all that, the bullying can away. pretty much never end. But how have you taught your kids? And I know you got three boys, but what does the sheepdog mean to the Wells family? So the sheepdog one was one that I was skeptical about. It's a part of my life that uh, I was skeptical about sharing because LinkedIn is a business platform, you know, and just, I mean, I can't tell you how often I put videos out there and I go, okay, is this too much? Is this, is this not appropriate for LinkedIn? Um, but so the sheepdog was when I hesitated to do, but, it, but in 2021, I was like, you know what, I'm going to change this up. I'm just going to be as, I mean, I'm already raw and authentic. I've done videos of me sitting on the toilet, you know, with the fingers coming underneath the bathroom door wanting to get in, you know? So if I can show that, I can show this other part of myself. And the other part of myself is that I'm all about self-defense and firearms also. And, you know, it, a big part of that is the safety aspect of it, you know? So firearms can only be dealt with in the most, in the most safe and delicate manner. So having firearms in a house, in my, in my mind, means you raise children with those firearms to know what the safety rules are surrounding firearms. And those kind of homes are not the ones you have tragedies in. Um, so sheepdog is not all about guns and stuff though. It's about all kinds of stuff. It's about having s situational awareness. So I talk to my daughter all the time about when she's riding on her bike or walking to school, whatever, not having headphones in where she can't hear things around her. Um, the sheepdog aspect is just, Hey, I don't expect my children at any point in their lives to start a fight or pick a fight, but they will have my permission. My children, my boys are too young now to get it, but they will have my permission growing up to finish something if they get started on them. You know, I mean, I want them to be able to protect themselves, but I don't want them to ever be the aggressor ever to be, you know, the, the person that's provoking somebody to anything, but we teach them about that. So, you know, in our house, there's a video I did where it talks about several different aspects. We have a home security system in our house. So there's that part of it. Um, there's the firearms and the fact that my nine-year-old daughter can spout off Jeff Cooper's, you know, uh, gun laws and, and firearm laws for, for safety. Um, there's, there's having a, a map, a plan in our house in case there's ever a fire or anything like that, they know what to do and how to react to that. So I just, we teach and instruct them on those aspects of life here in the house so that in those worst case scenarios, they know how to react and they know what to do in those situations. And, um, I don't want my children to be victims because yes, like you said, the bullying follows them everywhere they go now in their pocket. And my daughter, she's nine, she does have a smartphone. So that's, a, that's one of the biggest I think the biggest struggle as a parent, my biggest struggle as a parent is a smartphone. Um, we have Bark on our phone, on her phone for that very reason. But even with that being there, it's still something you got to be very vigilant about all the time. Um, so yeah, I, the, the sheepdog mentality for us in our home is that there's, you know, three kinds of people in this world to quote the American cyber movie. There's, there's, there's people who don't want to recognize evil for what it is. Uh, there's people who think evil does not exist. And there's people who are out there to stop the evil and people who will do something. You know what I mean? I forget who, who quoted it, who said, you know, all that takes, all that it takes for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. Well, I'm not going to teach my children to be a good man that does nothing or a good woman that does nothing. I want them to be people that will step up and do something to stop that from happening. Mm. Man, that's amazing. Good. Seriously. Good for you. I don't think there's an, there's not a lot of parents who are, we're talking about this kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, every one of my kids knows how to defend themselves. And I think that's really important. And 
I always tell my kids the same thing, kind of like you, we've had the sheepdog conversation a, a ton. All my kids know how to defend themselves. They've taken some kind of martial art. I've got a background in martial arts. I think it's so important to be like, you know, hey, listen, if someone is ever trying to hurt you or someone that you care about, you have every right to defend yourself and them, okay? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to do whatever measures you need to do to defend yourself, right? And right. I don't want, if you're doing it for those reasons, I don't want you to worry about necessarily getting in trouble with the school because I'll go to bat now. I, you'll never be in trouble with me if that's the case. So, you know, don't worry about that. However, God forbid I ever hear that you abuse what you know to push around somebody for no reason whatsoever other than to entertain your, you or your friends. Yeah. If that ever happens, you will see a wrath in me that will scare the crap out of you. All right. So don't ever do that. And I'm proud to say that my, my kids have never done that, you know, and, and they have had to be the sheepdog either in their own life when they're getting bullied mm -hmm. or, um, or, you know, protecting somebody else. There was actually a, a quick side note. My, my six-year-old uh, was beaten up pretty badly by some neighborhood kids here. And my, my boys will fight with each other as, as they do, you know, and, and he, he didn't know how to defend himself at the time because he hadn't, we hadn't put him in jujitsu yet or something like that. And as much as, especially my 13 year old and my seven year old battle, like they don't get along very well. The cool thing that I saw when my son came home and he had marks all over his face and his body that he had been beaten up, like I almost had to hold my son, my 13 year old back, back because he was like, He's like, they're not going to beat my brother up. I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm like, dude, calm down. And he looks at me and points at me. He's like, what are you going to do about this? Like challenging me. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, dude, yeah, I welcome that challenge. Mm -hmm. I was like, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go have a conversation with their parents, number one. But number two, your brother starts jujitsu tomorrow. Yeah. You know, and that's what we did. Put him in jujitsu literally the next day. But like, I love the fact that my 13 year old, which they battle a lot literally was ready to go toe to toe with anybody in the neighborhood that did this to my kid. Yeah. So I, I love yeah. that. Yeah, man. I mean, like they say that the wolf, the, the world is full of, of the wolf just prowling, looking for problems, you know, and there's yeah. too many sheep out there that are blind to it. So a sheep dog's got to step in. That's right, man. Well, Hey, let, let's, let's end with this. I, I want to talk about uh, what is, what's your overall goal? What's your hope for basic dad stuff? So my hope is that I, is I want, I want to put together a program. It's going to be nothing like what you do, Larry. I'd love to be something as well as you do with the Dad Edge Alliance and stuff. But I'm just trying to inspire and encourage men to do better, be better, basically to be more intentional and to be more present with their kids. Because the biggest lesson I try to pass on all the day is just to get up and do something, get off your butt and do something. Because so many men come home and they think that they are present because they are there in the home when being in the home is not being present with your kids. That means getting up off their butt and, and playing with them, doing something with them, making sure that you're enjoying life with them because you get no do-overs. You know, I mean, there are no do-overs in life. Uh, like you say, you only get one life to live. You might as well make it epic. You, you want to make this childhood for them matter. You want to make it as, as epic as you can for them so that they go on later on in life. And there are legacies. You know, I want to live legacy-minded. And I want my children to recognize they are that legacy. And they're going to go on and, and make a difference in the world, brother. I love that, man. Well, hey, let, let's actually end with this. Uh, I, I want you to think about something. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds kind of morbid, but it's not. And, and the question is this. Uh, years from now, you'll be on your deathbed. And I want you to imagine for a second that you're on your deathbed with no regrets. You lived the life that you wanted to. You had the interactions with your kids that you wanted to. You lived a legendary life. What types of things are you celebrating and reflecting on as you just pass from this life and into the next that bring you joy? Man, that is a great question. I ask good questions, man. You do ask good <laughs> questions. Yeah, man. Uh, I think that for me, looking back and for my wife also looking, looking back and seeing our children and seeing where they are at in life at that point in time. Do they have the same, not the same passions because they can be their own people, but do they have the same passion for people? Do they have the same passion for their children? Do they, do they inherit that same passion for, you know, being able to, to bring life into the world and, and make that life beautiful? 
uh, and just enjoying life because too many people don't enjoy their lives. Are they enjoying their life? Can we look at them and see they're doing what they love to do? They're not just, you know, another ant in line marching to the beat of the war drums, or are they actually really doing what they love and enjoying life and making a difference for Christ, man? I, I never really touched on that, you know, that I am a Christian and, I, and that's a big part of my life as the faith. But I want my children to know that they're doing what they love and that it makes a difference in the world for the kingdom. Isn't that a Bible on your right-hand side? It is a Bible on the right hand side. Yes, sir. I thought so. Is it the John Maxwell one? <laughs> that no, this is actually I love this one because this is uh it's not John Maxwell, it's the keyword study Bible. And years ago, my wife got this put on here for me. It says right there in the bottom, it says playbook. Because you know, we gotta know how we gotta know our plays, gotta know where the X's and O's move and move around the fields. And uh, you know, you gotta study the playbook to to live the life the right way. Dude, I love that, man. The playbook. Um, I have the John Maxwell version. Um, I, I love that version, but I, I love, I love the playbook. Yeah, good for you, man. Yes, sir. Dude, this is this has been uh this has been super inspirational. And uh and thank you for sharing your your ideas, your platform, and in particular, man, your humor. Much needed in the world these days. So appreciate you doing that. Thanks for having me on, man. Really has been a true privilege. Hey, you bet, man. Hey, here's what we're going to do, guys. Uh, so this is our our Fierce Friday, right? <laughs> Fierce Friday. This is episode number four of Fierce Friday, formerly Thursday Throwdown. You can go to gooddadproject.com forward slash Friday four, the number four, gooddadproject.com forward slash Friday four. In the show notes, what we're going to do is we're going to have links to the Dad Edge uh, Facebook group where Matt is actually a part of. He actually pops his videos in there. Right? It keeps us all entertained. We'll have links to connect with him and his videos and what he's doing out in the world, his LinkedIn profile, the whole nine yards. We'll also have a couple of links in there too for Dad Edge Alliance, which we mentioned today, also our course on uh, 21 Days to an Extraordinary Marriage. We talked about that. That's a total free resource for you guys, 21 Days to an Extraordinary Marriage. We teach, I teach you three skill sets and three challenges to connect with your wife on an epic level. So you can find all that again, gooddadproject.com forward slash Friday four. Matt. Thank you so much for coming on, man. This was a blast. Definitely was, man. All Thank right. You. you bet, man. Gentlemen, go out and live legendary. Take care.